Today's topic is Ancient School of Thought in Geography. For this class, we will only cover the Greek School of Thought and Roman School of Thought in brief. Uh, the time scale is very important. When we are defining a, defining a particular school of thought, that is Ancient School of Thought, so we have to get an idea what is the ancient period. The time frame is very important. Okay, let's go for the time scale. When we are talking about the ancient school of thought, first one is the Greek school of thought. Here, uh, we will uh, define the period uh, as an ancient period up to second AD, up to second AD. But starting period of the ancient school of thought is quite unknown to us. That's why we will start from the Homeric period that is most probably uh, to 10th to 12th BC and we will end it, we will end the ancient period up to 2nd uh, AD, okay. Now come to the point of Greek school of thought. Basically, Greek school of thought, if you divide the Greek school of thought, it will be segmented into the three parts. First one is the observation, all the thinking, all the thought process based on the observation. Second one is the measurement of ob uh, observed phenomena uh, represented by the measurable unit. And third one is the generalization. Basically, Greek school of thought followed three principles. First one is the observation, observation of nature, observation of earth-related phenomena, observation of art, size, uh, pattern, all these things. Second thing is the measurement. And third thing is the generalization. Next one, if you divide the Greek school of thought, uh, we can divide the Greek school of thought into the two traditions. First one is the mathematical tradition. Second one is the literalist tradition. What is mathematical tradition? Okay, Greek school of thought is the pioneer. Greek philosopher were the pioneer to identify the shape, size, pattern, rotation, speed, position of the earth, all these things. And they represent all these things by the mathematical calculation. That is the mathematical tradition. And second version is the literary tradition. Suppose Iliad and Odyssey, those, uh, those two were the epic uh, poem of the ancient era of Greek, uh, of the uh, written by the poet Homer. So those are the literary description. But those literary description provides the idea about the contemporary world about the position of the continent and ocean, about the climatic condition, all are the descriptive, description through the, their writing, through their literature. But those information provides uh, basic, uh, basic information about the geography and geographical study. So we can, before starting the Greek school of thought, uh, three things is, two things is very important. School, Greek school of thought, thought followed three principles, observation, measurement, and generalization. And Greek school of thought traditionally segmented into the two halves, mathematical tradition and literary tradition. Okay, before going to the uh, particular philosopher, one thing is very important. Greek is the breeding ground of philosophy. We can get, we, there are lots of philosopher, lots of thinking. So it's very difficult to cover all the philosophical aspects, obviously related to the geography. But here for convenient, we are taking two, four or five uh, names of the philosopher from the Greek school of thought. Here the we, here this graph showing the pattern, uh, showing that time scale of the Greek school of thought. We can start from uh, Erastosthenes, Hipparchus, and we can end it with the Ptolemy and Strabo. This is the time scale. Okay, uh, straightforwardly go through the uh, go through the Greek school of thought. First one is the Homer. When we are talking about the Greek school of thought, first person is the Homer. Uh, Homer, the school of thought of Homer is the literary tradition because Homer was the poet. Here I would like to mention one thing: Homer was the blind by birth. Okay, okay. Uh, we can get two epic literature from Homer: Iliad and Odyssey. And then uh, it was the fact of most probably tentatively uh, 12th to 8th century BC. That was the starting point of geography. But Homer did not define any concept of geography. He did not define any concept of geography. 
read that uh, our, uh, so why Homar is the uh, why why we are we are calling uh, Homer is the starting point but his writing the Iliad and Odyssey epic poem where the combination of literary tradition which describe the topographical position known and unknown place of the earth location of the ocean location of the continent all are the description description through the epic literature in spite of that we are getting the regional information the locational information that's why we are we are acknowledging the homer as a starting point of geography second one is the uh, the here i like to mention one thing that homer homeric tradition of geography was the literary tradition we are getting information from his literature second one is the thirst of Miletus, Thals of Miletus. The tradition of Thals of Miletus was the mathematical or astronomical. Rather, they are the um, Thals of Miletus was the was the uh, Greek philosopher who described the earth. Not only described, he observed the earth phenomena and and described all these things to the mathematical calculation and statistics and mathematics. Okay. That's why we are we are calling the Thals of Melas is a mathematical and astronomical approach to identify the geography as a subject. Okay, now go to the contribution. This is the time period of, of Melitas. Uh, then go to the details of Melitas. Okay, uh, first thing is that uh, Melitas Thals of Melitas was the first person who predicted the solar eclipse describe and uh, graphically presentation presented the solar eclipse even in 585 bc okay second thing is that he provides a lots of uh, geometrical information about the triangle and circle okay go through the diagram okay uh just so uh, uh, Thals of Miletus, who who proposed the concept that circle is bisected by the by its diameter. This is the radius to r is the uh, can bisected the circle into the two part. If this uh, this line can divide the circle into the two part, and also Thals of Miletus uh, described that the uh, a triangle is the is uh, the Three a three angle of a triangle uh, is is equal to one eighty degree. All these the geometrical principle and theorem proposed by the Thales of Miletus, and this is not directly related to the geography. The so why we are acknowledging the Miletus because this uh, information helps to uh, helps to identify the proper shape, size, pattern of the earth, earth structure and the other astronomical phenomena. According to Melitus, uh, earth was a, earth, earth looks like a flat disk, just like a floating vessel in the sea. According to Melitus, Melitus thinks that um, uh, the thinking of the Melitus is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite similar to the contemporary thinking all on those days. Uh, they are thinking that the uh, artist looks like a dish or the plate on a flat disk that's floating over the worst sea, just like a vessel, flat vessel. That was the basic thinking of the Melitus, and one important thing of the Melitus is that he he estimated the time scale of the equinox and solstice, summer solstice and winter solstice and equinox. Okay, the next come to the third one that is Anaximander. Anaximander was the cartographer and mathematical geographer. Okay, and uh, he was the person of Turkey in modern day. His motherland is Turkey. Okay, according to the modern day. Okay. Uh, here I would like to mention that Alexander, uh, uh, sorry, Anaximander was the friend of Pythagoras. He followed the principle of Pythagoras. Okay, then uh, he was the first person who who proposed the gnomon and sun dial for measuring the time. Okay, and he proposed and prepared the world map and placing the Greece in the center. 
okay all the greek philosophers are very much attached to the their motherland they always uh, proclaim in favor of uh, greece and they are always uh, depicted that greece are in central and ideal location of the earth okay and then another uh, important contribution is that okay he, he calculated the length of and the direction of shadow with the help of vertical scale and and prepared a sundial to identify the local time okay this was the very much um, i mean a very much uh, important step to those era to identify the local point here go to the another slide okay uh, and alec anaximander anaxi anaximander proposed a few concept according to anand uh, anaximander uh, there was three uh, continent in the earth that is europe libya libya is the old name of africa it's the asia and ocean this is the ocean area he identified only only the two inland ocean that is mediterranean sea because they are greek people they were the greek people they are very familiar with the mediterranean sea and black sea so uh, he he identified the two in, inland sea that is mediterranean sea and black sea and rest of the area is covered by the ocean that is atlantic sea according to her actually according to anaximander the, there were three main continent europe africa that world name of africa is libya and the asia according to this philosopher according to the anaximander uh, the earth is looks like a plate just like the previous uh, melitus let's look like a plate and uh, it's it's just it's, it, it's just like a must air earth is positioned in the center of the universe and other planets even the sun is moving uh, moving around the sun within sorry moving around the earth within the particular orbit okay here looks earth is in the center all the stars and the satellites and other planets are moving around the earth that was the concept of anaximander okay now go to the go to the uh, hecataeus 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 was the father of geography okay before uh, hecataeus uh, hecataeus we are not directly uh, directly uh, calling anyone to as a father of geography Hecateus was the first person when we uh, called him as a father of geography. Why we are calling him a father of geography? He opposed the mathematical tradition. He was not mathematician like uh, like uh, Melitus, uh, Thales of Melitus or Anaximander, so on. He he don't like to don't like to pursue the mathematical tradition, but he described lots of geographical phenomena okay uh, and uh, and lots of geographical phenomena okay he was the first person and he was up, up to some extent he was the historian he was the first person who writes the about the celtic people and their language okay they describe each and every attributes of the celtic people and their language okay he also go through this slide okay he also believed the idea which is very similar to uh, to greek school of thought that this is the according to him there are there are also three continent europe libya and asia and also the two inland mountain mediterranean sea and black sea okay go through the right go through the picture of right hand side this is europe mediterranean sea black sea in his map he also plotted the river this is the nile river nile this is the asia ganga river ganga and uh, ganga and shindhu okay this is the europe he also plotted first time he was the first as in hikatai hikatayus hikatayus he was the first person who proposed and implemented the river system in the two dimensional surface he draw the river into the two dimensional surface okay and according to him the earth was just like a plate floating uh, just like a vessel uh, which which are floating on the river or sea 
are according to Hecateus. Uh, Hecateus, he proposed a lots of concept about human geography. He described the Celtic people. Okay, he he circular plane of Greece in the center. He also believed that the Greece lies in the center position of the earth. Okay, he don't like mathematical tra tradition like uh, Thals and Anaximander, so on. And he also described the position and location of India. He was the first person who described and mentioned the location and position of India and also, also give example and description of the Indic people, Indus Valley civilization and the Kabul, like the uh, Indus Valley and its related population and Valley of Kabul. He described all these things related to Indus River and Indic uh, Latimus. Okay, so we are calling uh, uh, calling uh, Hecateus as a father of geography because he first time proposed the region and variation about the Celtic people. He was the first person who described India and and the people living around the Kabul and the. Uh, and the uh, Indus river basin area. He also described the position of Europe, Libya, and Asia, and also described the location and position of inland ocean surface. Okay, next come to the Herodotus. We are all familiar with the name of Herodotus, or uh, he was the father of history. So why we are calling, we are why we are calling or including the Herodotus in the field of geography because Herodotus is the father of geography but one one important and famous word of Herodotus that is that geography must be treated historically history must be treated geographically think about this sentence geography and uh, uh, think about this sentence because all the geographical phenomena related to the historical event all the historical event and the direction and achievement of the historical event based on the geographical attributes okay and he was the first person who tried to put first time the meridian on, on the world map concept of meridian on world map he uh, theorization or tried to plot the direction of the river nile okay and Caspian, he also described the Caspian Sea is a inland sea, and and also, and he was the uh, he, he described lots of things about the people of Europe, Africa, and the Asia, and he 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 described lots of attributes about the Persian Empire. You know, uh, why when, when we are talking about the Herodotus then the geopolitical rather uh, geopolitical or political geographical attributes was very much uh, important because this type of concept pro first time proposed by the Herodotus. Here I would like to mention one thing that Herodotus was the historian. Basically he was the historian because uh, he um, when he did his research and, and then he described uh, all these things with the gathering. Uh, he was the very good, uh, very good kibolbo. He was the very good oral uh, recitation. He was he presented all his publication, all his uh, presentation, all his uh, thinking through the oral recitation in public crowd. He was very good orator. Okay, he was the first uh, historian who collect historical attributes and geographical attributes and make a assimilation about the historical attributes and geographical attributes and he presented all these things through the public crowd okay through the recitation method now he was a very good narrator very good narrator narrate all these things and okay and another important attributes of Herodotus is that he also believed that earth lies in the sorry Greece lies in the center position of the earth and also believe the concept of equium equium is the uh, equium is the habited part of the earth inhabited part of the earth okay and Herodotus also believed the superiority of the Greek 
and uh, uh, superiority of the Greece people, all these things. This is the basic concept of Herodotus. Okay, let's come to Plato. Here, one thing is very important. You know, Plato was, uh, by profession, basically Plato was a wrestler. Okay, okay. Uh, he's, uh, he's first and foremost, he is a mathematical geographer. Uh, he, he proposed and strongly established a view that is the geocentric view. What is geocentric view? Geo means earth. According to Plato, earth is lies in the center of the earth. Now, basically, now we are thinking about the heliocentric concept. Sun is the helios means uh, helios means the sun in Greek word. Uh, and sun is the center of the universe and we are all planets and and satellite are moving around the sun. This is the heliocentric concept. And what is the geocentric concept? Plato believed in the geocentric concept. What is geocentric concept? The earth is in the center of the universe. All the planets, even the sun, even the moon as a satellite moving around the sun. But they are they are uh, they are ellipse elliptical uh, orbit their orbit are not elliptical their orbit is near about circle this concept is the geocentric view of plato plato was the first person who first person the idea that art being a sphere then he is a mathematical geographer okay he contributes a lot in the field of mathematical geography because he was the first person, he proposed the idea about the universe that is a geocentric view. Earth is the center of the universe. Second one is that he proposed the views that Earth is a sphere. Okay, first time he proposed and mathematically calculate and, and uh, by the two-dimensional surface, he presented the tentative shape size of the Earth as a sphere. Okay. So, uh, contribution of Plato is uh, very important in, in the cases of uh, shape, in the cases of measurement of shape, size, pattern of the earth, okay. And he also tried to the, uh, tried to uh, calculate the motion of the earth surface, okay, speed, uh, motion of the earth, speed of the earth, because uh, art, uh, because art, the more, sorry, he tried to calculate the motion of the sun. Uh, he tried to calculate the length of the orbit of the other planet, all these things. Okay, let's go through this slide. Okay, this is the views of Plato. The here art is the center. Then three things is very important. He always uh, believed in the three things. Uh, that is the water, air and fire. Earth is uh, circled by the air, layer of air, that is the atmosphere. That is, Earth is circled by the layer of fire and layer of water. That was the believed, uh, that was the thinking of the Plato and Earth is the center of the Earth. And all the planet, even the sun, are moving around the Earth, but they are their orbit is a circle, uh, perfectly circle, okay? And this is the basic concept of Plato. But Plato was the first person who, who established and proposed. Basically, they proposed and then established the earth is a sphere. This is very remarkable step, uh, remarkable contribution in the development of modern geography. Okay, next come to the Aristotle. Aristotle also the uh, also the mathematical geographer. He proposed lots, lots of view about the geography. We are very familiar that Aristotle also believed and in in the shape in in and advocates in favor of spherical shape of the earth. Okay. Next thing is that he also tried to uh, try to calculate the meridian. Okay. And he also believed in the geocentric views of Plato. He also believed that the earth in the center and sun and other planet are moving around the sun. Okay. And he also believed in the knowledge of earth habitation, all these things. Aristotle also believed is that Greece is located in the center of the earth and meridian goes through the um, Greece. 
central meridian goes through the greeks and uh, greece is the perfect location of the world he also believed that the earthquake and volcanoes were closely related to the origin this was the very remarkable thinking of aristotle first remarkable thinking about the aristotle number one is the spherical shape of the earth second one is the geocentric view of of the earth third one is the there is a relation in between the earthquake and volcanoes okay and fourth one is the knowledge about the human habitation of the earth and last one is that he believed in the inductive method and empirical knowledge okay what is inductive method we will discuss this later but we are familiar with the empirical knowledge he believed on the observation and getting knowledge from that that is the empirical knowledge he believed in the empirical knowledge and another important thing is that climate shape, shaping the human behavior okay basically aristotle was the determinist okay so so depend on the climatic condition leads the attributes uh, respond various types of climates are responsible for the various human behavior throughout the world okay and one important concept that that is equium equium is the habitat part of the earth he divided the earth into the latitude zone center of the zero degree and uh, and uh, in between in between 23 degree and half north and south he defined as a equium it is the perfect location for the human habitation he divided the world into the latitude zone okay center part of the earth is known as equium what is equum we will discuss in another class okay next thing is this uh, um, uh, that that erastosthenes erastosthenes was the very important person in greek philosophy as well as in the geography he was the first person who straightforwardly used the name of his books that is geographica before erastosthenes no one is used the name geography he was the first person who used the name geographica to describe his or uh, his experience okay he divided or identified the five climatic zone he followed the aristotelian school of thought and five climatic zone that is torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone frigid zone is the polar zone torrid zone is in between zone temperate uh, torrid zone is the uh, is the two sides of the equatorial zone and a temperate zone is in between the torrid and the frigid zone okay and uh, and uh, another important things about that he was the first person who divided the circle into the 360 degree okay this is a very important mathematical achievement he divided the earth into the 360 degree okay he was the first person who tried to measure the length of the circumference of the uh circumference for of the earth okay and he determined the he tried to determine the uh, length of linear distance between the sun and the earth earth and the moon he tried to decide the length uh, try to decide uh, did he tried to calculate the um, uh, linear distance of this uh, celestial bodies okay go through the slides Erastothenes one important thing is that he was the person of Alexandria during this those i have told uh, you when we are talking about the ptolemy in last class that uh, erastothen was the uh, was the citizen of alexandria during those days the uh, uh, the alexandria was the very important and popular city okay and he was the librarian of alexandria during those days who were the librarian the 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 position of librarian was the very prestigious job and erastothenes uh, copied or uh, there was no during those during those era xerox machine was not available but he he copied lots of uh, famous valuable books okay erastothenes uh, go through the go, go try to calculate the circumference of the earth and he also point out a particular location and prepared a well now through this well he can observe the 
uh, solar eclipse. Even today, there is an wells and obelisk near the Ashwan Reservoir and near the Alexandria Ashwan Reservoir. And then uh, in the left hand side of the river Nile, there is a well. Even today, each and every solar eclipse, you can observe all the details through the through the image of the water of the well. Okay, go through this picture, then we can identify that. Then we can identify that. Then we can identify that. Okay. Okay, later I will discuss this. I am not finding now. Okay. So Erastothen uh, measured the length of the circumference through the stadia method, circumference divided by 360 degree divided by 7.2. This is the Alexandrian sailing. And through this method, uh, on the basis of uh, perpendicular sun rays of a particular place and the inclination of the angle of the sun rays to the earth's surface, to use this mathematical calculation, he proposed and uh, calculate the length of the uh, circumference of the earth and also identify the proper position and location of the uh, of the art surface from where uh, people can observe details minutes about the solar eclipse all these mathematical calculation are done by the illustrations okay he was the versatile genius and length he geographical measure of the length of the equator okay length of the equator he tried to plot the coordinate system latitude and longitude he, he was the first time try to plot but those was not those were not the perfect in position okay and his books was the geographica uh, first time he used the word geographica or geography and uh, and another thing a uh, sun and moon had independent motion of their own he he was the first person talking uh, parts uh, first person proposed and established a new dimension of the study of astronomy that is sun and the moon both are uh, both had a independent motion for their own and uh, the idea of the Eratosthenes is very similar to the modern geography because he was the first person to uh, calculate the distance of the circumference he was the first person who proposed the method of stadia. He was the first person who tried to plot latitude and longitude or rather grid system. He was the first person he on the basis of uh, on the basis of uh, basis of uh, inclination of sun rays of a particular position. He, he established a obelisk and wells in the ash near the Ashwan to uh, to observe the uh, solar eclipse from that point of view. Uh, he is the founder of more uh, he is the mathematical uh, he proposed the mathematical approach of geography he is the first person or founder or uh, he has is the first person to uh, to uh, give uh, to give the name he is the first person to propose the name our subject as a geography okay then hipparchus hipparchus also the mathematical geographer okay if he forecast, uh, um, he invented an instrument that is astrolabe. Astrolabe is the first instrument. Okay, then we are we are going to the then they are entered into the era of instrumentation. Astrolabe is the first instrument who measured the latitude and longitude. Okay, with precision, he was the first person who measured the longitude and latitude and observing the angle of polar star. Okay. This is the new way of thinking of astronomy and the solar system or the or the mathematical his, his approach was the mathematical approach to identify the shape, size, pattern, motion of the earth. And then go to that slide. One thing I have uh, I want to mention that this was the uh, this was the uh, concept of Eratosthenes about the about the position of the earth this is asia three main, main continent according to his view there were three main continent asia libya and europe and this is the atlantic ocean this is the mediterranean sea 
and this is the northern ocean according to the Eratosthenes and the, here the, he plotted the coordinate in his map okay then Hipparchus Hipparchus also formulated also established also mathematically represented all the attributes related to the eclipse solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse and this uh, this type of sketches first time proposed by the Hipparchus he 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 plotted all these things in details about the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse even today we are plotting we are we are we are copying that method to describe the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse hipparchus was the pioneer to to how to present the eclipse system in graphically okay uh, then uh, hipparchus and he, he, he also measured the angle of polar star and he prepared an instrument to identify the lat long that is astralope. Now go to the Posidonius. He was also the mathematical geographer. Basically all are mathematical geographers. They, they identified and they graphically presented the safe size pattern of the earth as well as the universe. Okay. And Posidonius. Posidonius was uh, famous for tides and uh, tides, uh, research of tides. He was the first person who proclaimed that uh, tides is related to tides is governed by the attraction of moon. And another thing is that he he described the earthquake and volcanoes. And he, uh, he taught a uh, lots of things from his teacher who observed the Sicily volcanoes uh, during, observed the eruption of Sicily volcanoes. And he learned uh, details from his teacher about the earthquake and volcanoes. And he also uh, tried to uh, try to measure the circumference of the earth through the stadia method or kilometer method. Okay. And he also uh, tried to measure the distance between the earth and the sun. And he also described, uh, Procedonius was the person who was the mixer of both. He was, uh, he has, he had, he did a lots of things in physical geography, in the mathematical geography, as well as the regional geography. It is, it described about the details of Roman empire and Roman civilization, about the people, their race, their food habit, the fundamental objective as well as he described the causes and consequence of tides and the lunar attraction, how lunar attraction is related to the tides, how the earthquake and volcanoes are interrelated phenomena and described as an example of Sicily volcanoes to, uh, to describe, describe the Sicily volcanoes and earthquake, how they are related. He also measured the circumference of the earth through the stadia method and also calculate the diameter of the earth and distance between the sun and the earth. So he made a lots of contribution in the um, in the field of mathematical geography. Okay, okay, and uh, uh, mathematical geography. So to sum up the Greek school of thought, we can only take few names: Homer, Thales of Miletus. Anaximander, then Hecateus, and then Herodotus, then Plato, then Aristotle, then Erastosthenes, and then Hipparchus, then Posidonius. We only included a few names from the Greek school of thought. Most of the philosophers philosopher are from the mathematical background, and most of the philosophers uh, contributed a lot in the field of mathematical geography that is related to the same size pattern of the earth surface only the only the only the herodotus uh, only the herodotus and the hecateus and homer they believed only in the literary tradition out of 
three people all are the mathematical tradition okay then come to the point of roman school of thought okay roman school of thought here i would like to mention another thing is that hipparchus also one thing uh, i skipped that that is hipparchus also prepared a star catalog he observed the night sky in regular basis in the rose island and discovered new stars and also identify their location their variation their direction all these things he was the first person who proposed the star catalog that is hipparchus and he according to hipparchus uh, uh, this is the views of the earth all are familiar about the mediterranean sea and the caspian lake those are the and black sea those are the inland inland sea and he mentioned another ocean that is the atlantic ocean and three main continent as usual asia libya libya is the old name of africa and the europe this is the basic concept of hipparchus so let's go for the roman school of thought okay two are very important in roman school of thought at one is strabo 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 was the father of regional geography his two books first one is the geography and second one is the historical memoria historical memoir historical memoria memoir in 43 volumes he was the pupil of present turkey amnesia amnesia is the location of present turkey okay uh, then uh, he was the first person who proposed the chorology chorology means the regional study okay also strabo is called as a father of regional geography okay he proposed the concept of chorology okay saying the second thing is that uh, strabo provides a vivid uh, description of roman empire he was the he, he was the pioneer of the tradition of political geography uh, tradition of uh, tradition of political geography and he wrote eight books on the description of europe six books on the description of asia one books on the description of africa that is egypt and ethiopia and strabo was the founder of chorological writing of the geography he arranged all the facts of the nations uh, all the description on the basis of time scale that time scale and spatial distribution that was the starting point of chorology okay and he first time he 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 proclaimed that caspian sea is a inland sea he also identified the location of sri lanka uh, according to strabo sri lanka sri lanka was in the western part of indian peninsula one of the most important contributions strabo commented on the fossil formation of the sea he was the first for person who commented on the fossil formation on the sea those were the marine fossil first time he not only the geography he contributed a lot towards the subject of geology he commented on the volcanism volcanism okay and uh, and explain all the phenomena of mount vesuvius and its volcanism all these things are very important and his memoria describes the political geographical description of whole europe through the eight volume through his eight volume of his geographical geogra historical memoria covers only the europe okay so he was the father of chorology or the regional geography next come to the ptolemy i have described a lot about the ptolemy in the uh, when we are talking about uh, i have already this already uh, told you about the uh, world map and the perception about the ptolemy that's why we are not going in detail he was the first person who presented the two presented the earth in the two dimensional surface through the help of conical projection okay those days that projection is called conic projection he is the first time properly plot longitude and latitude with the with the help of time scale he is the first person who proposed 
the art uh, who proposed the uh, star catalog he proposed the star catalog he now we are familiar with the uh, constellation system judaic constellation we are calling that that is leo is aquarius that is the constellation system constellation system is the few star combinedly giving a pattern like a, like a leo like a Gemini, all these things like uh, in Bengali, Shaptorshi Mondol, that is the constellation. Though he was the first person who proposed that star catalog as well as the, he arranged and organized the constellation system. Constellation system with the 21 North con Northern constellation, 12, 12 Judaic constellation, all these things. This, this new system proposed by the Ptolemy. This is the constellation system. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, he was the first person who proposed the latitude, longitude, central meridian and uh, plot a world map into the two dimensional surface with the help of conical projection and uh, all these things. Okay. He identified 1022 numbers of star. Okay. And he was, uh, he also believed in the geocentric view of art. According to Ptolemy, art is the center of the, uh, center of the universe and sun and others, uh, others planet are moving around and all these things. That is the, he, he calculated the, uh, calculated the circumference of the art, but it's quite different from the uh, Erastochanic's views. All these are mathematical approach, um, uh, approach of the Ptolemy. In brief, we can summarize our topic that ancient school of thought three followed three tradition three uh, followed by the three attributes: observation, measurement, generalization, and two tradition: mathematical tradition and literary tradition. Homer is a literary tradition. Thales of Miletus is a mathematical astronomer. Anaximander is a cartographer, first time cartographer we are, um, because he proposed the first time world map, okay. He was the mathematical geographer and Hecateus, he was the mathematical, he opposed the mathematical tradition, a descriptive tradition, he believed in the descriptive tradition. Hecateus camera bully, father of geography, then Herodotus, he was the father of history in spite of that, a descriptive approach by literary approach and oratory, good oratory and good description helps us to give information about uh, history and historical event on those, those, those days. Then Plato, mathematical geographer uh, and uh, provides the clear cut measurement about the sphere and the concept of 360 degree. Aristotle is the mathematical geographer. And uh, Erastothenes is also the uh, mathematical as well as the human and the literary geographer. He provides lots of information about the uh, art surface. He first time used the name Geographica. Then uh, Hipparchus. Hipparchus used the instrument astrolog to identify the polar star and the latitude longitude. Then Posidonius. He historical geography, political geography. And as well as the relation of the earthquake and volcanoes, he also gave his opinion about the earth's circumference, all these things. Then, then Roman school, we only include two philosophers, that is Strabo, then and second one is Ptolemy. Ptolemy, name of the book is Terra Incognita. Terra is for the earth in Italian word. Incognita is unknown. And uh, 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 Almagest. Almagest is the Arbian, uh, Arbian translation version of uh, of the work of Ptolemy in Almagest. It describes all these things. Okay, so thank you for today's class.